what's up everyone today's gonna be a how to replace the pull cord string whatever on a flathead Briggs this particular one is on a edger it's three and a half horse but this obviously will fit or will go with um, pretty much anything of this style the five rarely see fours I don't even know if they even make them three and a half three two two and a half all of them so basically what you're going to need to do is get yourself some string now if this is a lawnmower which the engine is basically the same except it just uh, situated differently you are going to have to cut a little bit longer this one is about five and a half six feet the other one you're probably going to want closer to seven or even eight because you have the length of cord that comes from the recoil going into the hook on the handle so you need to account for that but this one you can buy in a big roll because it's kind of cheaper that way a big roll it's like 60 feet and it's like 10 bucks one kit at the local hardware store i looked at was eight and if you do this again with another machine you saved yourself money but if you do it that way you have to kind of make sure to burn the ends I just use map gas or propane or whatever and then when it's hot you just make it so it comes to a little bit of a point that keeps it from fraying you don't want that to happen because then from there nothing good occurs now the person that brought this to me kind of the reason why I wanted to make this video thought that you had to drill these and uh, re and re rivet them no, you don't need to. And you should not put bolts in there because what's going to happen is you're going to have to put a bolt from the back because the flywheel is very close to this tin. And if it hits it, you're not going to be able to run. And then you end up having a length of unused bolt just chilling there. Don't do that. We don't have to re-rivet anything. What we're going to do is we're going to take out one, two, and then there's a third one on the other side. At that point, this whole cover comes off. I'm going to do that real quick, and then we'll look at it. When doing this one, it really helps to have an extension. You can't really get in there any other way. And if you have a wobble socket, that's even better. So, uh, alternative, depending on if it's the exact same situation that I'm in, the wheel is kind of obstructing it. I mean, if it's not, then you don't need a wobble, or even that long of an extension. But I'm going to do that, so just know that depending on your application, you might have to get a little creative. And now that all those are off, uh -huh. I'm running into this. This happens quite often, especially with machines like that. Uh, when that happens, you have two options. One, you can try to disassemble this a little bit. That might work. Um, usually, if I just do one side, it helps out. Okay, down to the real interesting part. That's what happened to the other one. So, as you can tell, that's usually... Well, I guess you can't tell, but this is usually where it ends up breaking. Side note, I don't really like the style. I do like more of the, the nylon. Same stuff that you make like paracord stuff out of, like those, I guess it's just paracord, never mind. Paracord style, I should say. This isn't, but it, it resembles it greatly. Anyway. First thing, because this doesn't have any holes that we can shove a screwdriver in to kind of help us out. So we're going to have to do everything by hand. That's the unfortunate part. And the older ones you potentially have these little tabs that you can um, bend back and pull this whole thing out or on this one we could take the screw out and then pull out the whole recoil I don't like doing that because underneath here is a big spring and if you release that spring you made your 10 minute job 30 minute job full of swearing so now we're going to if you look in there if you have the OEM style kind of stops and it doesn't allow you to kind of really do anything so I like to just take something like a pair of needle nose go in there and pull it through 
Obviously, you don't need to do the, the same knot as I'm going to do, but I like to go under and around and then through. Makes it a larger knot that's usually not too big for anything. And a small knot can potentially slip through and you just pull the string through, out again. There you go. Now we pull it tight and your handle is done. The handle part really isn't that hard. It's the next part. Now that we have that done, if at any point you notice the end, right this one is, a little bit wide, we want to trim that up a little bit just to kind of help us out because this next part is not going to be fun. It's not hard, but it's not going to be fun. So I'm just going to find out where it's a little wider. And store-bought kits, you still need to do this. Don't get me wrong. There we go. It, it might fray a little bit. It's okay. The majority of the fraying will be taken care of with your end that you put on there earlier. So this is the part. You want to spin it and make sure that the spring isn't broken. And it's not. So how do you spin it? Or how many times do you spin it? Well... I personally like to hold this steady and then spin the whole housing, which I'm going to do. But you're going to spin it counterclockwise. You can tell because the teeth come out. It's usually a pretty good indication. And how many times? Well, for a mower, it's like six or seven times probably it will be sufficient. For something like this, we're probably looking at five or six. It depends on the length of your, your um, line. But if you do it too much, then what's going to happen is you could potentially put a lot of pressure in that spring and it can come undone or even break. If you don't do enough, then you're not going to retract the whole amount that you want and your pull cord will be a little dangly. So you really need to kind of pay attention if you put everything's all done and the next thing you know it's kind of sinking or st sticking out a little bit. Just know you have to redo it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we'll be back. I have my thumb on a little tab that they have there. You can see that. So what you want is right this little area to be lined up with that hole. Because we need to take the other end and shove it through. And ideally, it will just go into that little slot. It's a lot easier if you can look at it from the other side. There we go. See that? We do the same knot. At least I do the same knot. It's a lot easier to hands. There will be a little extra. I just like to tuck that in so it's not a problem. There you have it. Done. Now, when you let go, you want to do this slowly. My hand is on the line. Slowly feed it back in. Too slow, the handle can rip out and hit you in the face. Or something bad could happen to the spring if you are that unlucky. Now you have it. Look at this. Retracts nicely. Everything's good to go. Now, a couple of things to note. If okay, if it's not moving very smoothly, then there could be dust or dirt or it's just discussing whatever it is um take this out don't actually pull the whole thing out try to give it a good cleaning puts a little bit of oil in there not a lot and then put it back that usually will help free it up so that concludes putting it on i'll go ahead or excuse me installing the new line i'm gonna go ahead and put it back 
back on the machine. We'll take a look at it and hopefully we'll be done. Noteworthy items. This little um, shield on the side, this needs to fit in. If you don't do it right, then you're not going to... You're, this is going to be like flapping. If this is all the way inside, then it's going to hit every single time the flywheel touches it. Potentially, it might. I mean, when you first pull it up, pull on it, you'll notice. When it's on, it probably won't. But it's just better to have this on the outside and these two upper parts and lower parts um, inside. I'll show you once it's in. Like this. If you did that, you're pretty good. The other side doesn't really have anything like that. Uh, you do have some linkages, most likely. Make sure they're free moving. You didn't have anything hit them. You're not pulling on a, st a spring or anything like that. Do a quick little general check. Do your screw holes line up, everything. If it does, feel free to put the screws in. Something you do want to do is you don't want to tighten the first one or the second one. Third one, once you're almost done you can tighten that one all the way and then go back and tighten the other two otherwise the third one or even the second one potentially could be a little difficult and you might not actually be able to uh, get the third uh, bolt in and it is pretty important especially on the, the top because if you are pulling on the recoil the top can slide this potentially can slide out linkages it's just not a good thing so make sure to put the screws in correctly. Yeah, here we go. Looks like everything is good. Go ahead and this machine, I think we need to choke. I do. Pull cord is there. Tracks. Everything's moving correctly. Something to bring up before you put the screws in or the bolts in to uh, anchor the whole recoil or the housing you want to make sure that when you pull on it it's not obstructed in any way there's a couple different versions don't want that so now that we know it's not obstructed and it's working appropriately let's give it a pull This machine needs a little bit more work, but we're good. Recoil and the pull string and everything is A-OK. -okay. We can go ahead and work on the other pieces. I'm not going to show that on this one, but if this helped you out, follow me on Instagram at smallengine101. Uh, leave a comment below. Definitely subscribe. I'll catch you in the next video. Have a good day.